I am here with you today to do a fun little craft with all of you. This is called scratch art. So I made one yesterday. It looks like a simple board, correct? Watch this. That's what scratch art is. And then you can make it over and over again. So what you do is, is you place equal parts paint and dish soap and mix it together. And then you just repaint. So what I would suggest is to make sure you have something like this in a container to keep it fresh. And I am going to show you how to make it alright so I'm going to put that aside because that's already done so what you're going to need is some crayons and you can use any colors you'd like I think a few different scents do is, is you're going to use all the colors, as many colors as you want, and you're going to fill this entire board. This is why we suggested to only use a small canvas for this, and make sure you press down extra hard, so that we don't have any white spaces left for the black to go into. Right, see? And then we're going to fill the entire thing. All different colors. What are some of your favorite colors? I love gold and blue. Make sure you keep that pressure on. The more colors you do, the more colors that will be on the other side when you, use, when you scratch off the paint. I think I colored the middle there very well in the red section. Hmm. Ooh, how about some pink? And we gotta press down super hard to make sure that you can put your paint over top. So now, I've already prepared our paint and it is equal parts dish soap and equal parts dark colored paint. So you can use black, navy, dark purple, dark red, any colors like that. And then you're just going to paint the entire canvas. And there you have it. It's all done. So once you're entirely complete and it's dry, watch what you can do with it. Just 
glowing in, in, at the castle today. This is what scratch art is all about. And then you can paint over it and do it again. Pretty cool, huh? best thing about this craft is you get to do it again and again and again. And once it dries, it's ready to go again. I'm going to put this one over here to make sure it doesn't make a mess. And I'm going to read a story. This one is called Sweet Surprises. Sweet surprises. When the bells on the door of the Jolly Bakery jingled, Claire, the baker's daughter, looked up from behind the counter. Her face lit up when she saw who it was. Bonjour, Belle, Claire sang out. I was hoping you might stop by today. I gave her, I gave my friend a warm smile and set down the stack of books that I was carrying. Hmm, I said, inhaling deeply. And just in time for fresh chocolate croissants, I see. Claire chose a pastry for each of them and brought the plates over to the little table in the corner of the shop. Are those new? She asked me, pointing to the new books. Belle often stopped by and read to me, read to Claire after visiting the library. Claire loved listening to the tales of faraway places as she iced cakes or rolled out dough. <laughs> Actually, those are the ones we've already read, I said. I'm about to return them. Then seeing the disappointment on Claire's face, I added, shall I make up a story instead? Yes, please, Claire replied, but let's eat our croissants first. Hmm, I said when we had finished. I just love chocolate. I know a few other princesses that love chocolate too. <laughs> then while Claire iced a cake, I concocted a fairy tale about fly a flying purple dragon and ancient beloved prince of the entire kingdom from an evil spell. I wish I could make up stories like that, Claire said with a sigh. Have you ever tried? I asked. They went to the back room so Claire could prepare the day's bake, bake deliveries. Sometimes I can think of a beginning of a story, but not an end. The little girl admitted, and sometimes I can come up with an end, but not a beginning. At other times, all I can think of is a middle. I don't have a very good imagination. Claire's father, Henry, overheard them. Ma chérie, he said. Do not worry so much about imagination. You have a lot of it. You just need to figure out how best to use it. Oui, Papa, Claire said thoughtfully. Before long, the bread was ready. I offered to help Claire deliver it. As we wheeled the baked bread cart around the corner, Belle Claire and I passed the dressmaker's shop. In the window was a very fancy dress. It looked just like a wedding cake. Claire remarked, I looked at the dress too. Claire was right. The skirt was made of tears of satin and the pink ribbons looked like icing. Madame designs all of the gowns herself, Claire said. She is so Indeed she is, I agreed. Each dress is different from the next. She must be filled with so many wonderful ideas. Aren't these pretty, Claire asked. Madame Ferret is so good at putting the right flowers in the right colors together. I nodded, but I noticed that Claire seemed troubled. As we left the shop, I asked my friend what was wrong. Everyone in our village is good at something, except for me, Claire blurted out. 
I wouldn't believe that for one second. What do you mean, I asked. Claire took a deep breath. You can make up wonderful stories and Madame Follette makes such a no... Flora can take a bunch of ordinary flowers and turn them into a work of art. You're an excellent baker, I pointed out. But I want to make something beautiful and creative, Claire said. From that moment on, Claire was determined to find a hobby to let her creativity explore. The next time I walked into the bakery, Claire rushed out from behind the counter and handed me a big box with a bow on top. For you, Claire said proudly, I designed it myself. Why, thank you, I, ex I replied surprised. I untied the ribbon, lifted the lid of the box, and pulled out a beautiful dress. It was sewn from patches of mismatched fabric. One sleeve was attached down near the waist, and the other <laughs> was above the other, <laughs> and the buttons were all out of place. I didn't know what to say. Luckily, Claire said it for me. Goodness, it's ugly! Isn't it? The little girl said, starting to laugh. <laughs> well, it's unusual, I said with a giggle. <laughs> I offered to try it on, but Claire wouldn't hear it. Bad news, Claire announced to Belle a few days later. I tried writing poetry, but I'm terrible. Are you sure, I asked. As I sat down on the steps of the bakery, just listen, Claire said. Then she read aloud, Sometimes when I roll out the dough, the rolling pin drops on my toes. When in the oven, the tart bakes. Alas, my foot still throbs and aches. You're good at running, writing a funny poem, I said. <laughs> That's just the problem, Claire replied sadly. I wasn't trying to be funny. She paused. I'll just try something else. The following afternoon, Claire arrived at the cottage where I lived with my father, Maurice. Wearing an artist's smock and carrying a canvas under her arm. I want you to be completely honest, she told me, as she unrolled a portrait that she had just painted. It's, um, very interesting, I said. It's Madame Foote's dog, Gigi, I guessed. It's you, Claire confessed. Oh, dear. Well, of course it is, I agreed. It, I just didn't recognize myself. And very pretty new hairstyle you gave me. Claire sighed. Belle, thank you for being so nice, but the truth is, I'm not a very good painter. Do you think that picture looks like me? I don't think so. <laughs> but Claire sure tried her very best. Don't worry, Claire, I reassured her. It's just like your dad said. You just haven't found the best way to use your imagination. You'll figure it out soon. I don't know, Belle, Claire replied, frowning. It seems like I've tried everything. Just then, my father called out to me. Belle and Claire went to his workshop and found him tinkering with an odd contraption. It was the latest, his latest invention. It looked like a bicycle with an engine, dials, an exhaust pipe, and a miniature trumpet of a horn. Beep, beep. <laughs> My father tested the horn. Look, he cried. It's a voom cycle to help people get to places more quickly. That's great, Papa, I cried. I've got to run, though. It's time to walk Claire back into town. Why does your dad invent things? Claire asked me as we walked toward the bakery. He can't help it, I answered. When he looks at an ordinary object, he sees how it might become something new and different. The next morning, I arrived at the bakery very early. It was my father's birthday and I was going to help Claire bake a cake. As the little girl cracked eggs, she sifted flour and whipped up a custard filling. I practiced with my pastry bag. 
It wasn't very good. Squirt, the custard landed all over Claire's father. <laughs> hmm, Henry said, tasting it. Magnifique. When the cake was done, I thanked Claire for her hard work, and my, my father will love it, I said. Suddenly, oh, I see something on my face. Suddenly, Claire clapped her hands together. I know how to make this cake. Make this a cake for Monsieur Maurice. She cried. Hmm, I wonder what she's thinking. Claire quickly made more cake, frosting, and filling. Then she added all to Maurice's cake. When she was done, the cake looked like one of my father's inventions. Claire, I exclaimed, don't you see? Baking is where your creativity shines. Claire beamed proudly. She didn't have a good imagination. And now she knew how best to use it. She did have a good imagination and knew now how best to use it. Isn't that wonderful? A couple of days later, I went into town and saw a crowd in front of the bakery. When I joined them, I saw that they were so interested in the loaves of bread shaped like swans and cakes that resembled fancy hats. The next day, I walked by the bakery again. Another crowd was gathered by the window. This time, they were looking at the huge cake in the shape of a castle. And the drawbridge was made of peppermint sticks, and the flower vines that climbed up the castle walls were pieces of candy. I entered the bakery. Claire, your baking is the talk of the town, I exclaimed. Claire smiled. Remember when you said your father doesn't just see what's in front of him, but what it might become? I've been looking at every day without realizing I could turn them into something exceptional. I turned to Henry. What do you think of Claire's creations? I asked. I think they are a product of a wonderful imagination, the baker replied. Then he winked and added, she gets that from me, you know. <laughs> Wasn't that a wonderful story? Now our scratch art will be nice and dry and you can try it out for the first time. So here we go again. Hmm. What am I going to draw this time? In there, I'm just going to scrape off the access there, and there you go. And then all you have to do is take your paint and soap solution, cover over it, and then you can do it again once it dries. And because you've used the soap, it tends to dry so much faster. And you can use it again. Chip is going to just love the scratch art. Now I am going to be opening up these princess eraser surprise bags. I'm leaving one for a different thing. But let's see how to open these. Hmm. I wonder what's inside. Should have brought some scissors with me. I don't see an open spot. Oh, it's Merida. Look at how beautiful that looks. It's a nice size eraser, too. It's really pretty. beautiful and I'm holding the enchanted rose that is very very pretty and the details very nice on these too well I hope all of you have enjoyed the craft today 
and I hope to see you all very soon. Au revoir, mes amis.